Let's look at what a tree looks like. When you think of a tree, you think of something like that. But really, in computer science, we think of trees like this. This is the savage scientist's head right here. And I'm the fool on the police car. What's up, folks? You already know who this is. This is the savage scientist and governor of the great state of Swampland, Governor Ed. So this is gonna be my, I think this is my fifth, third, third, fifth. This is gonna be my fifth video on the subject of data structures. Very important fundamental concept in computer science and programming. So if you want that job paying a hundred and something thousand dollars a year like I wish I had, and if you want to be a tech bougie bastard, Google got you covered. Look here, there's this L8 position paying a million dollars a year. Good luck landing that job if you don't know data structures and also good luck if you do know data structures. So here's the menu for this video. Pause it and skip to whatever you want to see or just watch the video from this point on. So we already discussed the rays, lists, stacks, cues, and today we're going to talk about trees and graphs. That's on today's menu. So I think I ran my mouth quite enough. So now, like I said earlier, this video is about to start. So this is something common with all linked based data structures. That is the idea of nodes, pointer, and some type of recursion. So let's start off with nodes. A node is the basic building block of more complicated linked based data structures, like the linked list I talked about earlier or in my previous video. So let me show you what a linked list node looks like. So what we have here are two nodes that make up our linked list. And starting off here to the left, we have the king of diamond and we have the nine of diamond. And we also have a pointer to the next node. If you start off with the king, it's gonna point to the nine and then it's gonna end at no. And below here is shorthand notation or the standard notation that we use to represent nodes in computer science. It's just simply just a square with an arrow pointing to the next node. And now is a perfect time to talk about pointers. A pointer is just a shortcut or a way of accessing specific areas in memory. We're using pointers in this example to point to the next location where the nine of diamonds is stored at in our linked list. And in powerful languages like C++ and assembly language, you could do a lot with pointers. All right, so now it's time to move to number three here. And that's recursion. Recursion is basically repeating the same action which is eaten using the fish example we have on the screen or playing some role in that same action before you, which is the actor, can complete the same task. So the fish in the middle might not even finish eating the fish that's on the phone because it's going to be ate by the biggest fish in the back. That's basically what recursion is. Recursion is important to data structures. So I want to give a few more examples just to make sure I'm explaining this as best as I can. Something like if you take a picture of a person taking a picture, that would be recursion. Or if you was to go get a loan to pay another loan, which I have definitely did millions of times. Or the last thing, if you stand in front of a mirror and put a mirror behind you, look at yourself copying. It's going to be like an infinite copy of yourself in between the two mirrors. That is recursion. So I went through all this trouble with making all those examples of recursion to show you the real recursion in computer science here. So what I have here is two list nodes that are recursively joined and they are joined by a link inside of each node that points to the next node. And if you was to look at that, it would look like those two nodes are on top of each other or they are in a sequence. And that sequence is done by those pointers. So a pointer is just a way of accessing the memory location where our data is stored. We use pointers a lot in computer science. And like whenever we declare a variable like int x, that x is a memory location and the x is just representing that location. So we could put our data at that location. So the magic happens with a simple function call within the data structure, in this case, the linked list. The linked list will then call its nodes to keep calling the next item. And that's just pulling memory locations to find the data that we're looking for. In this case, it's the card. I think it was what a nine of diamonds, but that's the point here. Nodes facilitate recursive 
calls to each other inside the data structure. That's all I'm saying. So now it's time to move on to trees. All right. So now let's take a look at what trees are. And like I said, in computer science, trees are upside down. Like I said earlier, a node is the basic building block of a link based data structure, such as the linked list. And we're about to look at the tree right now. Like we have something called a tree node. We can have a linked list node or a graph node. So let's look at the elements that make up a tree node. When we look at trees, we're going to have values called keys. In this example, the key is the number inside the circle. We're going to have the data that's inside the node. And then we're going to have these recursive links to other nodes. We're going to have what I call the left hand side, or this is going to be the left child node. And we're going to have the right hand side or the right child node. That's RHS and LHS. And this is why I talked about recursion. So, if we look at a quick tree, we're going we're gonna to actually see these nodes. So there we go. This is a good example of a tree. So we're going to use our same chords and the root of the tree, which is the top. So let me even show you that. The root is always the top. And these are child nodes. This will be left hand side. This will be right hand side. And the same thing with this node. As we traverse all the way down to the child nodes, or what we call leaf nodes, a leaf node is a node that doesn't have any left or right hand child. So now that we identified the leaves and the roots and all that good stuff, these are also child nodes. This is what a tree looks like whenever we just show them as nodes. You can see we have the key value four, we have the key value two, and we have the key value seven, key value five, and key value 12. Left hand, left hand link or left hand child, left child link, no, right child null on this one. But in this one, we have, we have the left child and the right child being pointed to right here. And the same with the root. When we look at the root, this is right child, and this is his left child. I go my terrible spelling, L-I-F-T, lift, damn it. Pretend like I didn't write that. So there we go. We have the left child and the right child from the root. And this one, left child, right child. So now that we have that, let me show you what this actually represents. My goal here is to recreate this tree. And this is the end user version of the tree, which is probably how you would if this was a card game. This would be your view. And let me show you what the data structure would look like in a simplified version. And this simplified version only shows the keys. And these keys represents the nodes that contains links to the memory location that holds the data that represents our cards. So now that we already have the memory location and I showed you what our tree would probably look like in memory, now it's time for me to show it to you in code. So let's create our binary search tree that's gonna have cards. So this first line of code we about to create our binary search tree. It's gonna be named T1. And what this part of the code does is creates a new binary search tree. This is pseudo code, so don't expect this to really compile into any executable. So this new binary search tree function takes a card as its object. So this could have been integer, it could have been character, it could have been Boolean, which is true or false. But in this case, we're going to have a tree that's going to contain cards. And the name of this tree is going to be T1. So we just created our blank canvas that's going to hold the tree. This is what our tree looks like. Pretty nice looking tree, huh? All right. So now we're about to go down to line number two. We're going to reference our tree that's called T1. And we're going to call the set root function. And 
we're going to put something in the root. That's why it's called set root. So our root is going to have the key value four and it's going to take the ace of club as its data. So that's the four, that's the node. The node is created and now I just put our data here. And the goal here is to access these two nodes and work our way down. So that's the key value four, that's our data. So now line three, we're gonna reference our tree called T1 again. We're gonna use the insert function. And we're gonna insert a two as the key and a jack of clubs, I mean a jack of diamonds. And to get to the location we wanna put this, this data, so we're gonna call the root and then we're gonna set its left hand child. So what we're doing is we are actually, we're talking about this. So that's what we just created. And now the data has been placed. So that's what our tree looks like after the execution of the third line of code. And now it's time to move down to the fourth line of code. It's similar, we're gonna be inserting a seven this time, which is gonna have a 10 of diamonds. And we're gonna go back to the root and call it right side, our right child. So this is where we at, right here. And like I said, it's a seven. And now it's time to show you what the node looks like. The data is here, the node is here. So after a fourth line of code, this is what our tree is looking like. Starting to look more like a tree, huh? All right, so now, fifth line of code. We're gonna hit the T1 insert. We're gonna call in T1 is the name of our tree. So all this is T1. We're gonna call the insert function and we're gonna be using the key value five. And it's gonna be a seven of diamonds. And to get to the location that we wanna insert this, this data, we're gonna have to go back to T1 and we're gonna have to find the seventh node. That's what this get function is. We're gonna find a node that with the key value seven. And once we find that, we're gonna hit its left hand side or left child. And we're gonna put this data into its left side. So now we're about to do the search. We're searching for key seven. And we're gonna start here with the root. So at the root, since it's a four, key value is four, we know that that's not the right thing we're looking for. So let's visit the left side. The left side is two. So recursively it's gonna say no and return back to the root. Nope, so now let's visit the right side, our right hand child. As it visit, its key value is seven. And that's what the search function is looking for, seven. So now we know that this is where we need to be. We're gonna be addressing with these, with this function, with this get function, we found where the seven at. So on this left-hand side, we're gonna be inserting this node with the five and seven of diamonds. So there it is, T node, and now, so that's what it's looking like. And now the data. So that's what our tree looks like. After the execution of the fifth line. So now we on the sixth line, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna call a reference to the T1, that's the name of our tree. We're gonna hit the insert function again. And this time, we're gonna be inserting key value 12, queen of diamonds. To find out where this data is going, we're gonna to have to find the node with key value seven. And once it finds it, it's gonna call its right hand side, or right child, and place that node there. So this is what we're doing. To make this video short, I left off the part that shows the details of the search. You could easily go back to the previous example when I inserted it on the left side. And now, 
That's the node and now the data is placed. So this is what our tree looks like after the execution of the six line and the completion of the same tree. And this is the memory that represents that tree. And this is the tree itself. And this is the code, pseudo code that created that tree. And this is a stripped down version of that tree if you want to know what it looks like in simplified version. Most of the time we see trees, this is what we this is what it looks like. And I'm going to redraw this. Now this is the tree. Root on the top. All right, so I've been calling this thing a tree for too long. This is a special tree called a binary search tree. And a binary search tree has special properties. So now I think it's time to start talking about those properties. All right, so here are the rules of the binary search tree. And your data structures book might have different rules, might have more rules or might have less rules. So this is what I could come up with off the top of my head to help you with your data structure studies. <laughs> so the root is the topmost node in the beginning of the tree data structure. And that tree includes the binary search tree. The root is on top. All right, so let's do number two. Key values represent the nodes holding the data and those nodes are ordered. And the ordering goes as follows. The right hand side or right hand link will be greater than the parent and the left hand link will be less than the parent and these nodes are the structure of the tree follows a, a family structure it's kind of like descendants and let's take a look at a tree saga so this in this tree you can see this is the highest descendant and these are left and right kids or left and right nodes, left and right children of the foe. And you notice, look at the ordering. We have a two here, that's less than the foe. We have a seven greater than the, than the foe. And this is its own parent. And when you see something like this, this is a subtree. Normally a subtree is written in that fashion. So this subtree is right here. And it has a seven as its parent node. And these are leaves. Like I said earlier, leaf nodes because they don't have any kids. So that's basically how trees work. And there are many types of trees with many uses. Just like the YouTuber tech for your needs, there's a data structure for your needs. And they have red black trees. They have binary trees. Like this is a binary search tree. You have expression trees. You have all types. So my mission here is to give you a brief introduction to what the tree data structures look like, its nodes and all that other good stuff. So next time you hit the file system on your computer, think about it being a tree. You notice the root on the top and you notice that's where all your files at are. If you take a math class, you can look at that math expression or that math problem as being an expression. You can make a tree out of it. Trees are everywhere not only in nature. So my next video is going to be on graphs. And after I take care of graphs, I'm going to be doing hash tables. So enjoy this footage of the great state of swampland. And also note, the state of swampland is not Louisiana. So this that you're watching is not Louisiana. So this is the Savage Science Air Governor of the state of swampland. Peace out.